we can no longer underestimate uh, this phenomena which we find in this digital world. It's not, about, it's not anymore about some individuals who are respectless. It's much more than that. It's about democracy. It's about uh, uh, trying to have a civilized discussion, uh, culture of discussion in our digital world. And we have to demand that and we have to do something. And what did we do, for example? Uh, we will set up now a clearing office uh, in the Federal Chancellery. And it is a clearing office with five employed persons, uh, um, juridical persons, but also psycholog uh, psychologists. Who, and this clearing office is an office which supports everyone in Austria who is victim of hate speech and who is, mob, uh, who is a victim of mobbing, for example. So everyone can call there, everyone can send an email chat, even can get a personal uh, meeting point. Uh, why did we do that? Because we wanted to signalize that uh, we do not under, under, underestimate this uh, problem and we want to show to everyone uh, that we are backing people and we do not leave anyone alone. And we don't, uh, the people are not left alone when they are victim of hate comments. And we know exactly that people who are discriminated in the real world, they are much more discriminated in the uh, digital world. Um, yeah, I think we have, it is very clear that we have our laws. We have a panel laws, uh, which defines and describes what is incitement. And the incitement in the analog world is also valid for the digital world. You cannot say this is only when you and uh, there is incitement uh, face to face, you know. No, it's also valid for uh, online incitement. And this is why I say freedom of speech is not incitement. Freedom of speech is not uh, insulting, is not uh, attacking people. This is not freedom of speech. I mean, you cannot do everything what you want. You cannot get rid of your aggression in a, uh, online and say this is freedom of speech. Of course, we know uh, that we have. Um, we, there are there will be for sure insultments who are not legally to be persecuted. Yeah, but how do you react on that? And I said from the beginning that we want to enforce and to strengthen counter speech, and uh, we have uh, produced, for example, ten free cards, ten uh, tips. How can you cope? with hate speech. For example, uh, how can you find out what are fake news? If you ask, uh, are, there serious, uh, uh, are there serious informations behind it? From where did you get this information? And so on. Yeah? Or it, that if someone is very emotional, you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to continue the discussion, but without emotion. Let's be rational or let's, uh, yeah, let's be rational yeah? and reasonable. Yeah? And there are some uh, some um, advices we gave to people. How can you cope with things when things are not legally to, to be persecuted? And I think uh, civil courage is very important. When you see that someone is attacked uh, in the real world, uh, you will stand behind him and you will say to the person who is doing it, why do you do that? Why do you act like that? Yeah. Um, go down with the emotions. The same thing we have to do in the digital world, that you have uh, encourage people and support other people. And this is what I find um, with me personally. When I, for example, someone writes a negative comment or even a hate comment, you find uh, immediately five others who are commenting on that. Yeah, And this is civil courage. And this is what we all also uh, we have to encourage, civil courage. But we have to make sure that our legal laws are also enforced. And this is why uh, because many people came to me and said to me, yeah, we went to the state prosecutor in the, in the countryside, for example, and after two weeks we got a paper saying, uh, yes, uh, we will not uh, go to court. And uh, they um, closed the case. And this is why we said, okay, it's a new phenomena. It's also a new phenomena for our courts, for our state prosecutors, internet criminality or hate criminality. And this is why we are creating now five state prosecutors who are speci uh, specialized, specialized on, on this topic. So we have our laws, we have to make sure that the laws are very well enforced. And then there is, the people have the feeling, okay, there is security. 
there is a, a set of law, there are rules followed. Uh, obviously, they target to undermine our democratic, democratic institutions and uh, to change our system. And this is, this is where, the moment where I say it's, uh, we, we have to be aware of that and we have, have to know how to uh, encounter that. And in my opinion, you cannot encounter that by saying, okay, we will make now rules and forbid everything. That's not the way. But what we have to do is to make people aware and to empower people to understand what is going around. And this is why we have uh, came up with this educational training for people who are not in school anymore, for people who are 40, 50, 60, and who are every day in social media. And they, and I mean, this is of course a generation, the elderly generation, they were grown up with, okay, what I read is true. What I read in the newspaper is true. But today, what I read in social media might be true, but it's not, it's, it's not sure if it is uh, real, you know. And this is why we have uh, to make sure that uh, people learn how to cope with this new phenomena. And that's the way we go. Yeah, what we can see and observe is that uh, right-wing and right-extreme political parties, they are uh, using, of course, social media channels, but they are using it in a manner where they spread a lot their ideology and uh, where they um, are also spreading a lot of rumors and, and negative informations uh, in order to um, create more uh, uh, atmosphere of fear in our society and of insecurity. So they are using it a lot. And uh, they are also saying, look, we are number one in having followers. For example, in Germany, the AFD, they are number one. Yeah, uh, regarding their followers. And they are saying we are number one online, so soon we will be number one in the real world. So they are also demonstrating their power, of course. And uh, also the third poli uh, political party, which is the strongest in the social media channels in Germany, is the National German Party. So we are facing here right-wing, right-extreme parties who manage to use these tools a lot to spread their yeah, their, their uh, right-wing ideology, which is often um, addressed against minorities, uh, ad addressed against migrants, uh, addressed against uh, uh, people in society. So it's always taking some groups, uh, putting them against other groups. And uh, so they, 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 yeah, they manage to use the social media channels in a very effective manner. That's um, also a strategy that um, have you observed uh, here in Austria with the uh, far right uh, political leaders? Uh, yes, of course, of course, because I mean they uh, said years ago we cannot rely on the conventional medias, yeah, and the conventional media do not uh, or the state media. I mean, which they sometimes they uh, uh, they um, they criticize a lot. Yeah, it's, it's well known that they criticize uh, state media or journalists or media and so on. And so they said, okay, we are going to create our own media. And this is what they did, actually. And I mean, when people, elderly people who have not that's, uh, such a strong media competence, they are following uh, their blogs and they're following their websites and so on, people do not dare to go out anymore because they feel so insecure because they spread so many rumors and so many negative informations which are not uh, corresponding to reality. Often the civil society NGOs say that the NGOs uh, and the online platforms are not removing the hate comments in a very effective way and uh, not fast enough. And this is why I, I asked for more transparency on uh, when I went to the, when I was in Brussels and I had meetings with the uh, representative of European Commission, and we and we and, and I met also the the commissionary for justice, and uh, demanded that we should have more um, uh, transparency uh, in regard of online platforms, which means that they have to report how many hate comments do they be, do they get, how many do they delete, how many people do they employ, and uh, how many uh, juridical persons do they employ? And do these people have reference to the countries? Because if someone's sitting in Ireland, he does not understand Austrian uh, 
uh, politics. And uh, then uh, we find the situation sometimes that they delete, they don't delete uh, uh, comments with national socialist reference, but they delete uh, uh, comments or pictures with satirical background because they don't know what is what is normal and what is what is uh, what is uh, illegal and what is uh, uh, satirical, for example. And this is why I'm I'm convinced if they would have this obligation to report things, if we would know more about how they act, how they work, then things would change for the better.